What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 30 of the Financially Free Journey podcast, and I am your host, Courtney Dyer. Now, this podcast aims to dispel the seemingly complex topic of things like personal finances, money management, debt, savings, investing, and even retirement. And this podcast is specifically designed to help you feel empowered by increasing your knowledge as well as your comfort level when it comes to flexibility your money muscles. Now, if you are new to this podcast, welcome, welcome. There has been so much that has happened since we really were producing episodes weekly. Of course, as everybody knows, we've had a pandemic going on, but not only that, in my personal life, I've had a baby since the last time uh, I was really producing episodes on a weekly basis. Um, She's a couple weeks old now as we record, and so if you hear a baby crying in the background, just know that it's authentic me. I have my baby here and I'm recording anyway because I have so much information that I want to share with you guys. I'm really passionate about all the things that have really come to fruition in regards to our economy. And that's what today our episode is all about. It's all about how COVID has impacted our economy and really just digging into the nitty gritty of the current state of affairs. And you will absolutely walk away from this episode more knowledgeable and feeling more comfortable when it comes to making smart money decisions. But I I do have to say that my heart really does go out to those that have been financially impacted by the virus. And, you know, it's easy to preach financial preparedness, but the reality is, is that so many people were not prepared for this unexpected financial disaster that happened. And, you know, who could have predicted over what it, what was it? 20.6 20.6 million Americans would lose their jobs this year due to the pandemic. Our unemployment rates in America have topped over 14% this year, and that's levels like we have not seen since the Great Depression. And I would be amiss to not include my international listeners because we do have uh, listeners located in over 51 different countries around the globe. So I did want to talk a little bit about that global impact that the virus has had as well. And I did look up this stat earlier that according to the BBC, four out of five people, their jobs have been impacted one way or another due to the virus. And so this is absolutely an international crisis, as we all know. And demystifying our current economy and how COVID has impacted it is just one of the first steps of financial empowerment. Remember, knowledge is key, right? So for this episode specifically, I'm really going to be focusing in on the economy in the United States. And this information information can absolutely be useful for my international listeners as well, especially if you are invested in American-based businesses. Um, I did post on Instagram this last week for people to send me questions that they have for a chance for those questions to be featured in an upcoming episode, and I received some fantastic questions, and I'm going to try to go through as many of those as I can during this episode today because a lot of them have to do with how COVID has impacted the economy and how people should really proceed forward in regards to making financial decisions, specifically when it comes to investing. So um, we may have a second episode if I can't get through all of them today because there have been so many questions just flooding in. But the first question that I'm going to start with is, okay, this is a great jumping off point, guys. The question was, how does our current economy either differ or is the same as 2008 in regards to the stock market? Okay, this is a really popular question right now um, because the word recession has been floating around, right? And a lot of people want to know, how is this the same or how is it different since 2008? First thing, 2008, the 2008 recession was very focused on the banking system and specifically the mortgage bubble. And the Fed had a lot of wiggle room to use what's called quantitative easing to help reverse some of the effects of the bad mortgages. Now, for those of you that may not know what quantitative easing is, it's where the central bank is able to buy government bonds or other financial assets in order to inject liquidity and money into the economy. So, 
in order to really expand the economic spending, the everyday person being able to have more liquidity cash in their pocket and then be able to put that back into the economy. The other thing that I want to point out is that in 2008, that recession was really concentrated in the United States. Now, move to our 2020 economy. The virus, as I just got done mentioning, has had a global reach, and we have had a lot of deflationary factors. Uh, Another way that the 2020 COVID economy is different is really the role of the central bank and the Federal Reserve. What is different is the Fed is funding the banks to be able to buy up tons of bonds, right, and investment-grade bonds. And one of the biggest dangers we really need to look out for, in my opinion, is like, for example, Germany announced that they are going to continue to print money and flood the market to increase spending to really try and stabilize their economy. But the problem with this is if it doesn't work and the banks can't save the market by doing that, then we are in for much worse problems. Problems. And this really leads to um, the next question that I wanted to highlight. It really it, it flows nicely from that last one. The, the next question was, why can't we just print more money to help those that are struggling? And so I really wanted to go over this concept because I know this is something that a lot of people may wonder, right? Why can't we just print more money to help people that are struggling and to help stabilize our economy? The problem with our artificial money circulating around in the market is that some of these large corporations were becoming extremely highly leveraged with essentially cheap money, low taxes, and that allows them to buy back their own stocks. What we have been seeing in the market is what's called a liquidity crisis, meaning everybody is trying to raise cash and sell something that they have in regards to their holdings. And with a lot of the large corporations being highly leveraged, they have to dump a lot of stock. So in my opinion, larger corporations are probably going to survive just fine, but a lot of the smaller corporations are going to end up having to file bankruptcy due to this. Now, if you keep printing money, the the more money that you print, the, the more reduced the value of the currency is just in general. And this means things that are dollar denominated and the dollar starts to falter. We can then be starting to talk about an economic situation that no one wants to see in our country and really hasn't been seen since the 1970s, which is called stagflation. And that happened with the oil crisis in the 1970s. If you wanted to look up the last time stagflation had had really been prevalent in the United States. And uh, stagflation is essentially where you have a slowing economy, but you have hyperinflation when it comes to prices. So the next question that was asked was, uh, let's see here, I really want to make sure I cover this one. As an investor who has limited investment experience, how much should I be paying attention to the volatility in the market? Oh my goodness. The volatility in the market in 2020 has been insane. It is the volatility we're currently seeing in the stock market certainly is not normal. And a lot of highly experienced financial advisors and just investors that have been in the market for a long time will say that they also can't remember a time that the market was having constant thousand point swings. The volatility is unprecedented. Uh, But as a new investor, or someone with just really limited experience investing. Maybe your investment experience is just limited to your 401k or retirement accounts. Now is not the time to be what people refer to as a passive investor. And that means someone who just sits back and rides out the highs and the lows of the market. It's really critical that you are engaged and you're really educated around what you're invested in. And if you don't work with a professional, you need to be working with a professional. You need to consider contacting uh, someone to review your 401k. And most employers have a service through your 401k's brokerage firm where you can go in and have it actively managed and have it reviewed. Um, And really, this is critical because it's your retirement account. This is your nest egg for your retirement years. So take the time to have a professional review this. This is a great option for someone that may not feel confident in actively managing the funds themselves. If you take 
anything away from this episode, I want to make sure that you immediately contact a financial professional or look into setting up an appointment with one to review your current assets and really how you're leveraged in your retirement portfolio specifically. And okay, so the market is correcting. And because we're in a free market, the market will continue to correct until it gets to what people consider to be a fair market value for funds. And the market was due for a correction, long overdue for a correction. And with the virus on top of it, it was like the needle that pricked the balloon. So we are seeing massive volatility starting out in uh, the beginning of the year, um, January, February, we had a massive dip. And now we've had a swing back up. It's been rallying. The market's been bullish, but we've seen thousand point swings in the market and it's like no other. So the next question is, as a new investor, I know that the market has been correcting and I am just waiting for the right time to jump into the market and invest. How will I know when the market has leveled out and it's a good time to start investing again? Okay, this is great. So in my opinion, And really, I can only answer this question from a personal standpoint. Again, you need to contact a financial advisor and someone who's looking at your specific situation. But in my opinion, um, from a personal standpoint, what I will personally be looking out for is there's a couple things to watch. First, there are going to be phases to this market correction and reaching what we call fair market value on stocks. And this is really going to indicate when it's a good time to start buying up stocks at a discount. That's the the best way to think about this huge correction. You're going to be able to buy stocks at a discount. One of the first signs to watch for is the big stocks in large cap, uh, like Facebook and Google, starting to settle out. You're not going to see as much volatility. And the next, going to small cap. And for those of you that may not know, the small cap really represents the manufacturing sector of the market and the supply side of the economy. If we're going to see any type of bottom, it's most likely going to be here in small cap because it represents the manufacturing. And this is where we saw a major major market correction in the first place. Um, And we saw that way before we saw it in large cap. I can't say when we will hit the bottom for sure. I mean, who knows, right? I I wish I had a crystal ball and I could tell you or myself when we hit the bottom, but I do know what I personally am looking for and that as a listener, the best thing that you can do is, again, is contact a professional to review your current investments and see if you're in the best situation according to your investment strategy because uh, you really want to have a strategy and a plan in place so that way when you, the professional that you're talking to really feels that the market has bottomed out, you're ready to jump in and you've got a plan ready to go. Okay, so wow. <laughs> talking a million miles a minute here, guys. We really covered a lot today, and I hope that this episode helps shed some light on our current economy and how COVID has impacted it. There's so much more to cover, but I want to keep these episodes short and compact so you can take action on the information because, again, I know when we're talking to finance about finances, there's only so much you can cram into one episode before you start to you know, think about what you're going to make for dinner. I understand that. But uh, if you're not already, please make sure that you're following us on Instagram. It's at Financially Free Journey. And I share daily tips and motivation to really help you on your financially free journey. And if you haven't taken 30 seconds to review the podcast, please go review the podcast. Give us five stars. Leave your comment. Tell us other listeners what it is that you love about the podcast because reviews, if you don't know, that's how it, you become more searchable and findable for listeners. Are those, yeah, that's a correct word, findable. <laughs> but the reviews are critical to help other listeners be able to find this podcast and get this information that you guys are all benefiting from. So take 30 seconds I will love you forever and go review the podcast. I really appreciate it. And again, go follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, and I share those daily tips and motivation to help you on your financially free journey. Until next time, guys.